This is a pre-course video for the Difficult Access in Children's course. Today I will provide a brief overview on the traditional blood sampling techniques used in the paediatric population. My name is Rochelle McGee and I'm a paediatric reg currently working in the Belfast Trust. These are the objectives I hope to cover. A brief run through of the paediatric blood sampling techniques used using the five W's, who, what, where, when and why. This will help us appreciate the difference in blood taking practices based on the patient's age with an emphasis on neonatal blood sampling. A key take home message is the importance of using vein saving techniques where possible and I hope to provide a few tricks and tips for you to use in the future. So the five W's. We will start with who and a small history lesson. Who developed the idea of blood taking? I have no doubt you're all familiar with the idea of bloodletting been used throughout history as a way of treating disease and illness, and this was first documented by the ancient Egyptians. In fact, the first successfully documented blood transfusion took place in 1667, and that was between two dogs. It wasn't until 1950 that Dr. Massa, an American anaesthetic trainee, developed the concept behind the modern IV cannula which used plastic tubing placed into a vein over a metal needle segate. This was developed due to complications from the previously used hollow metal needles, which were prone to infection, dislodgement and migration. So who is the best person to perform the procedure? IV access and blood sampling in paediatrics is notoriously tricky. And so it's important to have strategies in place to determine the best person for the job. The DIVA, or Difficult Intravenous Access Score, was developed following a study looking at children having IV access cited in the emergency department. The results generated a patient list of factors which determined the chances of a successful first IV attempt. If a patient generated a DIVA score of four or more, this indicated a greater than 50% chance of a failed first attempt at citing IV access. The patient factors include vein visibility and palpability, patient age, prematurity and skin tone. Using this basic bedside test, we can ensure the right person for the job, reducing staff, parental and most importantly, child distress. The second W, what? What equipment is needed? Equipment will vary based on the type of blood sampling or IV access needed. For older children, butterfly needles and a syringe are best because vacuum systems, classically used in adult medicine, risk collapsing their smaller veins. Heel pricks are a good option for younger children, especially in the neonatal period, not just for capillary blood gas sampling, but for more routine bloods as well. Tripper needles are ideal for smaller, superficial veins, typically found on the back of the hand or feet. Another piece of very underrated equipment is sucrose. A Cochrane review from, from 2016 found sucrose to be an effective at reducing procedural pain for single events such as heel pricks, venipuncture or IM injections in both term and preterm children. But remember, timing is key. Sucrose should be offered two minutes before starting a procedure for optimum effect. Cannulas come in, in many sizes with the commonest size being a 24 gauge or yellow cannula. Remember, Larger gauge cannulas may be needed in special circumstances, such as particular nuclear medicine scans, heparin infusions, and for short-term increased blood sampling, like those seen when managing DKA. More detail around paediatric cannulation can be found in Dr. McCrory's talk, Cannulation Ticks, Tips and Tricks. Most paediatric bloods can be extracted from smaller paediatric sample bottles. When in doubt, contact the lab in advance to minimise the need for repeated blood draws. From my own experience, removing the EDTA lid last and replacing first reduces the risk of unwanted clotting. The third W, where. Location is everything, and this includes where in the clinical setting, which is best and what staff are needed. This will be covered in greater detail by our wonderful play therapy and phlebotomy colleagues. For neonates and toddlers, the back of the hand is the classic location for dripper needles or cannulas. The lateral aspects of the heel are the primary site for heel pricks to minimise the risk of damaging the calcaneus. This video simulates the technique commonly used for obtaining capillary blood gases. 
a small incision is made into the cutaneous layer of skin of a highly vascularised area such as the heel or the tip of the finger. I dorsiflex the patient's foot with my non-dominant hand to make collection of the blood gas easier. Intermittent relaxation of your hand promotes blood return to the heel and reduces the risk of artificially raised lactate results. Small air bubbles in capillary tubes can be removed by occluding one end of the capillary tube with a gloved finger and tilting the tube at a 45 degree angle. This promotes the air bubble to travel towards the opposite end of the tube where it can be expelled without the loss of the patient's blood sample. The same heel prick technique can also be used to collect larger samples of blood as demonstrated in this video. A thin layer of Vaseline can be applied to the skin to promote larger blood droplet formation. However, I would not recommend this if you're taking a blood gas sample as this can damage the equipment. The final two W's, when and why. Ask yourself before every blood sample or attempted IV access, why are you doing bloods? And can we stop? Remember, just because you can does not mean you should. Oftentimes, sampling is needed for ongoing monitoring, but remember, when samples are small and hard to come by, choose carefully. The best bang for your buck is the capillary blood gas. It is a vein saving technique and a micro sample only requires 0 0.065 of a mil. It provides information on acid base, ventilation perfusion, as well as electrolytes. They are also incredibly useful for establishing clinical trends. Arterial sampling is classically used in high dependency or intensive care patient settings and capillary gases are the next best thing. These two examples show that fundamentally arterial and capillary gases provide the same clinical information. But remember, if in doubt ask, could a patient switch to an oral antibiotic if their IV access is lost? And in many cases, if a patient is clinically improving, they could have a break from bloods. Congratulations, we have completed the five W's to consider when thinking about paediatric blood sampling. I hope you would agree that there are different blood sampling techniques based on the patient's age. I hope you would consider vein saving techniques in the future, particularly for those patients who undergo many procedures. I hope you found this talk useful and might consider some of the tips and tricks going forward in your future practice. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of the talks.